Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 9 on drought management in lecture number 36 today we will discuss about drought analysis. So, some of the topics covered in today's lecture include drought analysis, drought indices, standardized precipitation index, Palmer drought index, normalized difference, vegetation index, keywords drought analysis drought indices. So, as we were discussing earlier say when we deal with watershed management we have to deal with uh, say the, the plenty of water that means the flooding and then non availability of water say droughts problem. So, drought analysis as we discussed in the last lecture. So, drought assessments and then its analysis is very important. So, if there is any possibility of drought like we have already seen in the last lecture like meteorological droughts, hydrological droughts, agricultural droughts, social, social, sociological or social droughts. So, this classification we have seen. So, when we look into the to the drought analysis uh, we have to see uh, various aspects of the, the droughts say the what is the starting uh, the, say the starting of onset of the droughts, then the, the duration of droughts the volume of intensity of droughts. So, that where drought analysis is very important. So, since the drought itself is a very complex uh, and uh, say least understood uh, natural hazards. So, that way uh, we have to study the entire details of the droughts in details. Uh, so, that way the say uh, we need to analyze large historical data sets and then uh, uh, we have to come up with uh, the interrelationship between the climatological, meteorological data and then uh, say the agricultural uh, the, the, the details all these things we have to critically analyze and then uh, say we, we have to uh, come up with a certain indices so called drought indices. So, that will say that uh, the, 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 the give the details like onset of the droughts then the, the intensity of droughts like that. So, as we discussed in the last lecture it is not possible to avoid the droughts, but management of drought impacts and preparedness is possible. So, that way drought mitigation is uh, possible to certain extent. So, that way we have to understand the, the various aspects of the drought whether it is uh, the meteorological drought, hydrological drought or whichever the, the type of drought. So, we have to understand or we have to analyze the drought to, to understand the, the, the starting or the, 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 uh, the intensity or the, 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 the duration. So, like that various aspects we have to understand. So, the, the, the drought analysis uh, the, the success depends on uh, say how drought characteristics are uh, quantified. So, drought analysis means we have to uh, understand the characteristics of the droughts. So, uh, so, the success depends upon how the drought characteristics are quantified in so, terms of uh, some numbers or indices. So, that way this drought indices are commonly used to uh, analyze the drought as a tool. So, this drought indices uh, the this uh, are some numbers. So, these numbers assimilate thousands of bits of data on say for example, rainfall, snowpack, stream flow and other water supply indicators. And then uh, say uh, this this kinds of indices uh, say give some numbers. So, that numbers shows the, the intensity of the drought or onset of drought or various characteristics of the drought. So, some one of the uh, very commonly used uh, drought index, index uh, for uh, drought analysis is so the standardized precipitation index. So, here uh, say we will be discussing later the details of this methodology. So, here also uh, we identify say depending upon the, 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 the watershed characteristics depending upon the, the various meteorological hydrogeological characteristics. Uh, we, we quantify the possibility of drought it is the severity of drought in terms of a number and that number shows the, whether the drought the, 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 the coming drought the, the, the onset of the drought with respect to that whether it will be severe moderate or it is um, uh, very, uh, very, very uh, strong type of uh, uh, drought. So, all this uh, classification or all these aspects uh, we can uh, identify through drought analysis uh, generally in terms of uh, drought indices. So, uh, as I mentioned drought analysis actually uh, this drought analysis shows the interdependence between climatic, hydrogeological, geomorphic, ecological 
and societal variables. So, when we look into the, the, the droughts say as we discussed in the last lecture also and there are number of parameters we have to consider uh, say uh, and uh, these parameters decides when the drought will be on, the onset of the drought or the intensity of drought or the characteristics of the drought. So, that way uh, when we deal with when we discuss the drought analysis uh, we have to see the interdependence between uh, these various uh, parameters or various uh, variables say which influence like uh, uh, the climatic variables, hydrogeological variables or geomorphological variables. Um, uh, like that. So, uh, say that way it is very difficult to adopt a definition that fully describes the drought phenomena and uh, respective impacts. So, that way you can see that all these parameters or all these um, variables are uh, very, very difficult to quantify and uh, most of the time we can only put in terms of qualitative terms. So, that way uh, this uh, uh, drought analysis is a very difficult process. Uh, and then uh, say it is uh, very difficult to uh, quantify the impacts. So, that way as we discussed that last time also the concept of drought or the its characteristics vary uh, varies among regions of uh, different climates. Say for example, uh, say when we say the, 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 the quantity of rainfall which we are getting in some particular location say uh, if it is say for example, uh, say uh, 100 centimeter per year. So, but in some places wherever normally if the, the, the average annual rainfall is 250, then if you are getting 100 centimeter in that region, then that we, we may be able to say that that area is drought affected. But wherever the average annual rainfall is 100 centimeter only, so where they are getting 100 or have say 95 that, that area we will not say a drought affected area. So, that way we have to see the interdependence of various parameters or variable various variables and then uh, uh, we have to um, say, uh, say come up with the, the, the conceptual definitions of droughts uh, say with respect to the area with respect to the hydrogeological parameters um, and then uh, the, the severity of the droughts then duration and the extent of drought. So, this is the three important uh, parameters generally uh, three important aspects we look into when we when we go for drought analysis like what is the severity of the drought and uh, how much is the duration and then extent of the drought. So, these are the th three important things which we will be looking when we look into the drought analysis. So, that way the operational definitions of drought like you typically require the quantification of normal. Uh, or expected conditions uh, within specified regions and variations in and societal conditions. Say when we look into this aspect say like for example, say when we uh, see the rainfall whether the rainfall is the, the condition is normal or uh, below normal or uh, say the, 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 the with respect to the expected conditions. So, all those things are very, very important when we deal with the, the drought analysis. So, that way uh, we can have the operational definitions uh, formulated in terms of uh, drought indices. So, as I mentioned uh, you know, the tool we generally we use for drought analysis is uh, by using the uh, drought indices. So, uh, these are formulated uh, uh, say by considering the uh, various um, uh, aspects like uh, the climatic aspects, hydrogeological aspects, geomorphic or ecological aspects. So, like that uh, we can uh, have the uh, drought analysis. So, generally say when we deal with the, the drought analysis, you know the, the one of the most important aspects we will be looking is the hydrological drought. So, the, the so in the last lecture we were discussing about the meteorological drought, hydrological drought, agricultural drought like that. So, that way uh, when we when we are trying to quantify or when we are trying to analyze the droughts. So, generally it is uh, much easy to analyze in terms of the hydrological parameters. So, that way uh, we can choose the hydrological uh, uh, the drought analysis uh, through uh, hydrological models. So, generally we can use some, some one or another kind of hydrological models uh, like um, uh, water balance models, evapotranspiration studies. Uh, ground water and surface water uh, flow models. So, like this say we can choose say uh, any one of these aspects or in combination of these aspects like water balance uh, studies uh, say using models or evapotranspiration studies in the area of the watershed or the, the river basin which we consider. And then um, say we can study the, the ground water and surface water uh, uh, 
uh, say uh, analysis in that area through models. So, like that we can go for the hydrological uh, drought analysis. And then as I mentioned generally we will be looking for the onset of droughts, duration of the droughts and then in terms of water how much will be the deficit say if the drought, drought is, uh, is there then say with respect to normal condition how much water is required and due to drought condition how much water is not available. So, we according to that we can um, uh, analyze the deficit and then uh, uh, say like uh, say we can analyze with respect to simulated hydrographs for the area or the outlet of the watershed uh, like that. So, that way as we discussed earlier uh, the, the same we can have um, the, the, the black box models or empirical models or the lambda models or the, the distributed models say as far as the, the, the hydrological analysis is concerned. So, but uh, when we deal with the drought analysis generally uh, it is better to use physically based models since um, it is more effective and then uh, we, give, we get the distribution with respect to space and time. So, that way and the hydrological uh, analysis based on physically based models are generally used for uh, drought analysis. So, that way in drought analysis we are trying to explore the impact of uh, the, the say if you are looking for the man induced uh, changes uh, on the watershed or the or the, the, the river basins. So, then uh, what will be the uh, effect with respect to man induced changes on droughts say for example, if there is a dam is constructed or the reservoir is there then what will be the effects or the deforestation takes place in a particular watershed or the, the river basin in a, in a in an extensive way then what will be the effects like that. Uh, so, uh, say most of the existing um, the, the hydrological models we can use for drought analysis, but depending upon the area and depending upon the various uh, parameters still need some improvement if a very accurate simulation of uh, low flows and associated uh, droughts is required. So, generally the available hydrological models generally we are trying to identify with respect to rainfall runoff and uh, most of the time the, 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 the flood analysis etcetera. But when we are uh, drought is concerned it will be we have to deal with the very low f f flows in the uh, within the watershed like overland flow uh, or the, the ch channel flows are concerned and that way some modifications may be required for the if you are trying to use the existing uh, hydrological models as far as the uh, drought analysis is, is concerned. So, now uh, say when we look into drought analysis say uh, uh, we have to uh, see the various aspects uh, with respect to the to the uh, drought for the particular area. So, the, the generally used procedure here I have um, put in uh, in four steps. So, first one is the diagnosis of meteorological anomaly causing reduction of the major water input to the hydrological systems. So, that means uh, generally the precipitations or the 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 um, um, snowfall. So, here what we are trying to do is say uh, generally as we as we discussed the drought is generally due to the uh, especially the meteorological drought to the meteorological anomaly as far as the rainfall is concerned. So, with respect to this uh, say uh, when the rainfall reduces for the particular watershed uh, say uh, for the hydrological systems uh, then uh, the then uh, uh, we have to see the, the, the effects of that. So, what will be the effects of um, reduction of in the, the precipitation. So, that is the first step is diagnosis of the, the meteorological anomaly. So, uh, that is the first step. Then second one is analysis of the basin uh, hydrological dynamics uh, responsible for water retention, transport and storage in terms of its availability for human use uh, say just like um, uh, supply analysis. So, that way the, the second step uh, what we are trying to deal with is the, the hydrological uh, dynamics. So, uh, with respect to rainfall uh, to runoff with the various process are there as we discussed uh, in many of the lectures. So, that way like um, uh, the, the, the water retention or the, the transport and then uh, say how much storage is possible. So, all those things uh, we have to uh, 
uh, critically analyze in step number 2 with respect to the drought analysis. Say for example, in, say, if the, in hilly regions like um, the Konkan region in uh, Maharashtra, even though the, the, there is no um, uh, meteorological anom anomaly, the rainfall may be normal, but uh, still after 3 4 months of the rainfall, uh, say the, 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 there is situation of drought since the geographical conditions uh, say there is the, the soil is uh, not retaining the water, all the, the runoff will be uh, um, say uh, transported through the river to the to the sea. So, that way the, the water retaining is much low. So, that way we can see that uh, the, 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 there is a possibility of uh, drought. So, that way we have to analyze the basing uh, hydrological dynamics as far as the drought is concerned. Then third step is analysis of the potential and effective use of water. Uh, so, here um, uh, say uh, we have to do the demand analysis and uh, social and economic impacts of uh, say the water scarcity we have to see. So, uh, say uh, uh, even though say with uh, less available water say just like a drought conditions, so we, if we can you know, say do appropriate demand analysis and use less amount of water. So, that way still we can deal with the drought. Say for example, in a country like um, Israel where the, the rainfall is much much uh, less, still uh, uh, they are managing uh, their agriculture and all the system very effectively. So, that is mainly the demand management or the demand analysis. So, in the state Step number 3, uh, we have to deal with the analysis of potential and the effective use of water. And uh, step number 4 is assessment of uh, methods and models uh, of social and political organization used to react to and mitigate uh, such impacts, uh, seeking the most appropriate and effective ones in the reduction of uh, societal uh, vulnerability. So, in the, in the drought analysis, in the fourth step, we are dealing with the say the assessment of methods, the, the particular methods to, uh, to understand the, the societal vulnerability as far as the drought is concerned and then what will be the its impacts as far as drought impacts are concerned and then what a effective mitigation measures uh, can be uh, taken. So, that way uh, when we deal with the drought analysis, we can have uh, four steps. The first one is the diagnosis of meteorological anomaly, second one is the analysis of the basin hydrological dynamics third one is analysis of the potential and effective use of water and fourth one is the assessment of methods and models. So, that way we can uh, go for uh, drought analysis. So, as I mentioned uh, earlier say uh, generally uh, as far as drought analysis concerns uh, we uh, uh, quantify the drought in terms of uh, some numbers so called uh, drought indices. So, this drought indices uh, number of uh, drought indices are available. So, we can choose uh, a particular type of drought in this index uh, to, to analyze the droughts say for the given region. So, let us now look into the drought indices. So, as I mentioned uh, earlier, so drought index is a single number uh, useful for decision making. Uh, so, by considering the various aspects like the, the the meteorological parameters, then hydrological parameters, then the, the agricultural aspects like that. So, this drought indices are um, or drought indices uh, give measure uh, of different drought uh, causative and drought response parameters and identify and classify uh, drought accordingly. So, the particular drought index which we are dealing, so that is trying to uh, come up with uh, the causative and drought responsivity parameters and we are trying to quantify in terms of uh, some numbers and then uh, accordingly by using that uh, we can uh, say the drought is severe or moderate and we can identify and classify uh, the drought. So, uh, generally this kinds of drought index is used for drought warning and uh, lead time assessments. Uh, so, uh, the drought index indicates the, the, the uh, possible onset and then severity uh, and then uh, the, 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 the duration of the drought. So, th some indications are uh, given by these drought indices. So, drought indices summarize uh, different data on rainfall snowpack, uh, stream flow and other water supply indicators. So, this using uh, say various uh, say um, uh, aspects of uh, say the meteorological parameters like rainfall, snow, then uh, the, the hydrological parameters like stream flow. Uh, so, all these water supply indicators are taken into account and then that way only uh, we are deriving the, the typical drought index for the given area 
uh, so that it will be uh, that is used for the purpose of uh, drought analysis. So, some of the commonly used uh, drought uh, indices include um, Palmer drought uh, index or Palmer hydrological drought index, then uh, standardized um, um, uh, precipitation index, then um, uh, CMI, SWSI, VHI uh, uh, like that. Uh, say related to the surface water or related to vegetation or related to crop. Um, there are number of um, different types of drought indices are available in literature. So, uh, accordingly say depending upon the, the, the type of area and depending upon the, the type of analysis which we are looking for, we can choose a specific type of drought index and then uh, we can do the, the, the drought analysis. Uh, so, generally the water supply planners uh, find it difficult to consult one or more indices before um, uh, uh, say find it useful to consult one or more indices before making a decision. So, there will be lot of uncertainties with respect to each of these indices, uh, each of the index which we consider. So, that way uh, say generally water supply planners uh, say for long time planning and management. Uh, uh, say instead of choosing only one kind of index, we can choose uh, more than one index and then uh, say, uh, say analyze the various scenario and then uh, come up with uh, certain conclusions. So, that way this drought indices are very uh, useful uh, uh, for the water supply uh, planning and management uh, say especially on a watershed basis. So, now uh, when we deal with the drought indices as I mentioned um, uh, different types of drought indices are available in literature. Uh, so, one of the most commonly used uh, index is called uh, Palmer drought index. So, this Palmer indices take uh, some of the important parameters like precipitation, uh, evapotranspiration and runoff into consideration uh, while coming with an index uh, for the uh, drought situation for a particular area. So, that way Palmer drought index uh, gives a long term meteorological drought, it is a long term uh, meteorological drought index run on a weekly or monthly basis. So, depending upon the, 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 the analysis uh, we can have um, the, the, uh, the drought index say either weekly basis or the, the monthly basis. So, this is one of the, uh, the uh, first comprehensive uh, drought index um, say um, started to use in U USA in 1960s. So, that way uh, this is one of the earliest type of drought index uh, used for drought analysis and some of the limitations of this Palmer indices um, are slow to detect rapidly changing conditions and not as well as suited for inhomogeneous regions. If the region is homogeneous then it has been found to be very effective for inhomogeneous regions Palmer drought index has been found to be not so suit suitable. Then uh, this Palmer index is not as effective uh, in winter. So, especially so if it's summer season summer time the Palmer index has been found to be very effective, but um, whenever winter or snow pack, so snow fall all those things are there then this index has been found to be not so uh, uh, effective. Uh, so, as we discussed this Palmer drought index is used to quantify a drought in terms of a number. So, that we will be discussing later the Palmer index. And then uh, another type of index is say especially related to agricultural droughts. So, that is uh, so called crop moisture index. So, CMI. So, this uh, index gives a short term, it is a short term weekly index designed to uh, design to reflect quickly uh, changing soil moisture conditions for agricultural applications. So, um, uh, with respect to say, uh, say uh, in especially this is used for agricultural regions. So, uh, say starting from the, the putting the seeds and then it with respect to the growing uh, conditions of the crop. Uh, so, the crop moisture index gives say whether there is any possibility of the, the drought with respect to that particular crop is concerned. Uh, so, some of the limitation of, say one of the limitation of this uh, crop moisture index is it is used mainly during growing season. Uh, so, otherwise say especially this is useful for uh, agricultural areas. So, that is about the uh, crop moisture uh, index. 
then um, some of the other ind index like uh, Palmer hydrological uh, drought index. So, that is um, same very similar to uh, Palmer drought index. So, Palmer hydrological drought index is just uh, mainly dealing with the hydrological aspects specifically. So, um, it is a monthly index uh, generally quantifies long term hydrological impacts. Uh, so, here in this index that in, in index indicates the long term hydrologic impacts as far as the, the watershed or the area is concerned and uh, say one of the limitation for this method, method is it responds more slowly to uh, changes than the Palmer drought index uh, what you discussed earlier. Then another mo most commonly used index is called a standardized precipitation index or SPI. So, this is a monthly probability index considering only the precipitation. So, generally the, the one, this is one of the commonly used index uh, for drought analysis. So, in the standardized precipitation index uh, one only one parameter is there that is the precipitation. So, we analyze with respect to precipitation and then come up with um, uh, say an index. So, that indicates whether there is any possibility of the of the droughts. And uh, this SPI or standardized uh, precipitation index is calculated for a variety of time scales like um, um, from 1 to 60 months. Uh, and then the strengths include uh, the, the it recognizes uh, drought on many time scales and then anticipate long term drought cessation. So, th this is mainly based upon the, the rainfall condition or precipitation condition. So, that way uh, say uh, the limitation is that it consider only the, the, the precipitation. And then some other indices like um, uh, satellite vegetation health index uh, so called VHI or NDVI sometimes called. Uh, so, this is a satellite derived index uh, reflecting a combination of chlorophyll uh, and moisture uh, content in vegetation and changes in thermal conditions at the surface. So, uh, sometimes we will use this VHI vegetation health index or we use a normalized difference of vegetation index NDVI. Uh, so, uh, the one of the limitation of this um, uh, VHI is the generally it is used mainly uh, during the, the growing season. So, then uh, say uh, other kinds of index like um, objective uh, blended drought index uh, percentile OD OBDI. So, this is a weekly index averaging the uh, Palmer drought index, uh, then soil moisture and a 30 day precipitation and ranking the uh, percentile. So, this is so called OBDI index. So, the strength is it incorporates both the long and short term uh, indices and limitation is it is opposite um, uh, phased long and short term conditions uh, uh, may offset in uh, final output, uh, final product. So, that is the, the limitation of this OBDI. And uh, some other useful uh, drought indices include uh, like um, uh, percentage of normal precipitation, then USGS stream flow percentiles, then uh, USDA and NAS soil moisture measurements so called scan then uh, uh, SNOTEL um, uh, measurements, then the surface water supply uh, index SWSI. So, this is generally used in the western primarily during the snow season droughts. Uh, so, wherever uh, snow pad, snowfall is there. So, like this uh, in literature if you go through we can see number of uh, drought indices uh, for the drought analysis, but uh, commonly used uh, drought indices, in, indices include the Palmer drought index and then the the standardized uh, precipitation index. So, we will be discussing the detail of um, these uh, two indices and also you will see some aspect of the, the, the uh, vegetation uh, or the, the uh, health index or the NDVI and uh, we will be um, briefly uh, discussing. So, now let us look into this um, uh, the, the, the Palmer drought index uh, the drought uh, index or Palmer drought severity index. So, sometimes it is called um, uh, PDI uh, Palmer drought index or sometimes we call it as Palmer drought severity index. So, this uh, Palmer um, drought severity index it is a computation of the PDSI and, the, and it incorporates uh, a water balance model using the historic uh, records of uh, monthly precipitation, potential evapotranspiration and uh, simple two layer soil moisture reservoir. So, that way this PDSI or the PDI index is um, uh, say somewhat comprehensive uh, index. So, that um, 
uh, um, uh, shows that gives the effects of uh, historic records of monthly precipitation, then water balance, then uh, evapotranspiration effects uh, and then also the, the soil pattern and the soil moisture storage. So, uh, we consider here a two layer soil moisture reservoir. The upper layer is assumed to contain say uh, about 1 inch of available moisture at field capacity and the second layer underlying layer has an uh, available capacity that depends on the soil characteristics of the site. So, that way uh, here in the Palmer um, uh, drought index we consider the, the, the water balance, then the, the monthly precipitation effects, then evapotranspiration and the soil pattern also. And then um, the moisture cannot be removed from the lower layer until the top layer is dry. So, that way this two layer concept is used and runoff is assumed to occur when both layers reach their combined moisture capacity. So, when both of these layers which we consider both are saturated and then only we assume that the runoff starts. So, then accordingly this Palmer drought severity index has been uh, designed. Uh, so, the say as far as the, the um, Palmer dot severity index is concerned, the potential values required include the potential evapotranspiration, uh, potential recharge for the soil which we consider the amount of moisture required to bring the soil to the, its field capacity and potential loss like the amount of moisture that could be lost from the soil to evapotranspiration uh, provided precipitation during the period was zero. Then uh, potential runoff from the particular watershed or particular area uh, that is the difference between the potential precipitation and the, the, uh, the, the potential uh, recharge. So, that is the potential runoff. Uh, so, th that way uh, this uh, Palmer drought severity index is designed and the climate coefficients are computed as a uh, proportion between the averages of actual versus potential values for each of uh, 12 months. So, accordingly uh, say actual versus potential values uh, we can identify and then we can have the climate uh, uh, coefficients and the climate coefficients are used to compute the amount of precipitation required for the climatically uh, appropriate for existing conditions. So, say based upon the rainfall conditions, soil conditions and um, then um, various other parameters we can uh, calculate the climate climate coefficients and then uh, this this um, uh, we can effectively use as climatically appropriate for existing conditions uh, say that particular precipitation the amount of precipitation uh, so accordingly uh, we can derive the palmer severity index so here uh, this palmer severity index is obtained from these equations so the difference d between the actual P and um, the, the uh, CAFEC, the, the climatic climatically appropriate for existing condition. So, CAFEC precipitation uh, P hat is an indicator of water deficiency uh, for each uh, uh, case. So, this D is equal to P minus P hat. So, that, that is equal to P minus alpha uh, into P e plus beta into P r plus gamma into P r o plus sigma into uh, P l. Uh, and then uh, this alpha, beta, gamma and sigma are defined like this alpha is equal to E t bar minus divided by P e bar P, uh, beta is equal to R divided by P r and gamma is equal to R o divided by P r o and sigma is equal to L by P L bar for the 12 months we consider. So, here E t, R and R o and L r actually evapotranspiration E t recharge uh, R, uh, R o is runoff and uh, L is the uh, loss uh, respectively. And then uh, that way Palmer mo moisture uh, anomaly index Z is defined as Z is equal to K into D, where K is a weighting factor. So, to adjust the departures from the normal precipitation uh, such that they are comparable uh, among the different areas and uh, different months. So, Palmer suggested uh, empirical relationship for this K. Uh, so, where Z is equal to K into D. So, D is defined here and K is the weighting factor. So, uh, by plotting Z versus duration for the worst drought episodes, um, we can uh, obtain this uh, the variation uh, and then uh, uh, the linear relationship obtained for drought severity we can obtain as P d s uh, i t is equal to uh, psi into P d s i t uh, that uh, say the previous one plus epsilon into Z t where uh, psi and epsilon are some coefficients. 
So, the, the, the Palmer uh, drought severity index of the initial month in a dry or uh, wet spell is equal to epsilon into uh, Z t. So, Z t is uh, this, 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 this part. Uh, so, Z, uh, Z t means the, the Z index for that particular time period. So, Z index indica indicates how wet or dry uh, it was during a single month uh, without regard to past precipitation. Anomalies, uh, anomalies. So uh, there may be a past precipitation anomaly, and then, but here uh, for a single month we are uh, considering. So according to the 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 Palmer drought severity index, uh, the classification of drought and wet conditions as defined by the Palmer for PDSI is uh, given here. So PDSI or PHDI uh, value. So above four, uh, it is extremely wet spell and. Uh, uh, say, uh, say so much of rain is there and between 3 to 3.99 and severe wet spell then 2 to 2.99 moderate wet spell 1 to 1.99 it is a mild wet spell then 0 0.5 to 0 0.99 incipient wet spell minus 0 0.49 to 0 0.49 uh, near normal and uh, minus 0 0.99 to minus 0 0.5 incipient droughts then uh, say minus 1.99 to minus 1 mild droughts minus 2.99 to minus 2 moderate droughts, minus 3.99 to minus 3 severe droughts and below minus 4 extreme drought. So, as given in, uh, in the reference AWAS 2009. So, accordingly the Palmer drought is severity index we can identify. So, drought is concerned when this Palmer uh, drought severity index is uh, say negative. Uh, so, especially if it is less than uh, minus uh, uh, 0.5. Uh, so, uh, then there is starting from mild drought to uh, extreme drought below minus 4. So, that way this Palmer drought index has been derived and then uh, depending upon the, the area we can identify, we can quantify this Palmer drought index and then we can uh, say, say predict whether there is any uh, possibility of the drought whether it is uh, mild, moderate, severe or extreme. Uh, so, this is generally we do with respect to the historical available data, uh, since the, the rainfall prediction is possible only for few days uh, conditions, uh, but uh, uh, according to the historical data we can analyze and then uh, say uh, do the uh, drought analysis. So, that is about the, the Palmer drought severity index. Now, uh, another uh, type of drought index is the very commonly used uh, drought index is called the standardized precipitation index. So, let us look into uh, various aspects of this standardized uh, precipitation index. So, this SPI is based on an equal probability transformation of aggregated uh, monthly precipitation into a standardized normal uh, variable. So, we what we do we try to standardize with respect to the rainfall condition with respect to cumulative frequency we try try we try to standardize and then say for example, at location called Asasa the SPI uh, we can derive and that is with respect to cumulative uh, frequency. Uh, so, the computation of the index requires fitting a probability distribution to aggregate monthly precipitation series like a k is equal to 3, 6, 12 or 24 months uh, like that. So, say for example, this figure shows the equiprobability this transformation from fitted gamma distribution of monthly precipitation aggregated at 12 months to standard uh, normal distribution at the Asasa station a particular uh, location as uh, reported in this reference was 2009. So, that way depending upon the, the precipitation uh, for that particular region, uh, we can derive the standardized uh, precipitation index. So, this SPI generally we use to compute the non-exceedance probability related to such aggregated values and defining the corresponding uh, standard, standard uh, normal condyle as the uh, SPI. So, uh, say this SPI is the advantage that only one parameter is there. So, there is a statistical consistency and then ability to describe both short term and long term droughts impacts um, through the different time scales of precipitation anomalies. Like as we discussed with respect to uh, 3 months, 6 months, 12 months or 24 uh, months. 
So, the, the, the limitation is this is a based only on the precipitation. So, that is one of the uh, main limitation and a temporal, va temporal variable to SPI different time scales uh, we can identify and this SPI is developed for the purpose of defining and monitoring the, the growth. So, this is one of the, 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 the uh, most commonly used um, drought analysis techniques or the drought indices index is the uh, standardized precipitation index since it is much more simple and then easy to understand and then uh, easy to uh, derive for a particular area. Say for example, US National Drought Mitigation Center use this SPI uh, to monitor the current uh, states of droughts and then SPI can track drought on multiple time scales and this SPI with the 5 running time intervals like 1 month, 3 months, 6 months or 9 and 12 months. So, that way these are some of the uh, advantages of the, the uh, SPI based uh, drought uh, analysis. Then uh, as far as the, the SPI calculation is concerned, computation of the SPI is based upon the fitting a, a gamma probability density function to a given frequency distribution as shown in the previous slides or precipitation totals of a station. So, as I mentioned like this we do a gamma um, uh, distribution curve uh, fitting a gamma probability density function. Then estimation of parameters of gamma probability density function for a given frequency. Then SPI index is flexible with respect to the, the period chosen and the gamma distribution is defined by its frequency or probability densi density function like uh, GP is equal to 1 by uh, beta to the power alpha tau alpha p to the power alpha minus 1 e to the power minus p by beta for p is greater than 0. Here alpha and beta are the uh, shape and scale parameters, p is the precipitation amounts, um, tau alpha is the ga ga gamma function, maximum likelihood solution for optimal estimate of alpha and beta can be obtained like alpha is equal to 1 by 4 a into 1 plus square root of 1 plus 4 a by 3, beta is equal to p, p bar by alpha and a is equal to ln p bar minus a sigma ln p by n where n is the number of observations. So, that way uh, for the particular watershed or particular river basins uh, depending upon the number of uh, uh, observations available, we can uh, uh, derive this SPI, the standardized precipitation index and then accordingly we can identify whether there is any uh, possibility of drought, whether it is uh, the, the moderate, severe or extreme uh, like that. And this cumulative probability of an uh, observed precipitation even for the given month and time scale for the station using the resulting parameters like um, GP is undefined for P is equal to 0 uh, with respect to the, the earlier equation. Then uh, HP is equal to Q plus 1 minus Q into GP. So, Q is the probability of a uh, 0 uh, uh, precipitation and GP the cumulative probability of the incomplete gamma function. And then this Q is equal to m by n, n is the uh, number of uh, observations and m is the number of uh, zero uh, precipitations uh, as far as that particular uh, area is concerned. Then cumulative probability HP after its computation is transformed to the uh, standard normal random variable Z with the mean uh, equal to zero and variance of one uh, that is the the value of the uh, SPI. So, generally this SPI varies from uh, say, say like uh, this kinds of variation we can identify, we can calculate the SPI uh, and then uh, so according to the weather classification by SPI values and corresponding examples say even based upon what is the probability of events. So, two, the when SPI is more than 2, uh, 2 or more then uh, it is extremely category is extremely wet. 1.5 to 1.99 severely wet then 1 to 1.49 moderately wet minus 0 0.99 to 0 0.99 near normal and minus 1.49 to minus 1 moderately uh, dry minus 1.99 to minus 1.5 severely dry and minus 2 or less extremely dry. So, corresponding say this is a particular station. So, corresponding probability we can identify. Uh, depending upon the area and depending upon the data. So, the probability percentage we can identify for the given area and from that uh, say we can identify whether there is any possibility of droughts, how much is the 
the particular area is uh, say, uh, say amenable to uh, the drought. So, we can also have um, uh, say with respect to the, the rainfall pattern, we can also derive the, the, uh, the uh, uh, SPI uh, like this. So, this is also the details are given in the reference AWAS uh, 2009 and this table is taken from Lu Lucas and uh, Vasile Day 2004. This reference details are given at the end. So, that is about the, the, the SPI or standardized precipitation index. So, this is as I mentioned, this is one of the commonly used um, uh, say drought analysis uh, index. So, SPI. Uh, then um, the, the Palmer drought index, either PDI or SPI are the most commonly used uh, drought analysis uh, index. And then another type of index uh, which we can uh, use for this kinds of purpose is called normalized uh, difference uh, vegetation index. So, as we discussed now nowadays remote sensing is, is one of the commonly used tool to identify the land use and land cover pattern for the given watershed or given area. So, uh, through remote sensing, um, uh, we can uh, get the, the, the uh, vegetation index for the given area and then um, uh, we can derive a parameter called uh, NDVI or normalized difference uh, vegetation index. So, this NDVI is based on spatial and temporal variability of the vegetation and NDVI utilize the uh, reflectance spectra of uh, healthy green vegetation and uh, characteristically it is high in the near infrared region and um, say this varies from uh, 0.73 to 1.1 micrometer. In the case of NOVA advanced very high resolution radiometer AVHRR. So, before NDVA computation uh, say we can we have to do following co uh, conversations, we have to do the following for like for computation there is a need to uh, uh, geolocate the, the pixels from satellite data and then remap to uh, um, uh, a chosen projection. So, the, as I mentioned this is based upon the, the satellite data. So, we have to geolocate uh, the area and the pixels and then from the satellite data we have to remap the chosen uh, uh, projections. And then uh, say we have to do the sensor calibration of individual channels and then uh, implemented and digital numbers uh, converted to uh, spectral ref reflectances uh, to enable the uh, NDVI uh, calculations. So, uh, we, we can say using a specific formula we can get the NDVI VI and then uh, that can be used in the analysis. And then atmospheric uh, corrections we have to do and employ a method to uh, uh, screen for clouds. So, the, the cloud effect will be there. So, that also we have to consider since this methodology NDVI is based upon the, 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 the satellite data. So, the, the, the uh, cloud effect then uh, the atmospheric corrections all those things uh, we have to uh, apply. So, finally, the NDVI we can obtain as uh, NIR minus uh, red mi divided by NIR plus red, where NIR is reflectance in the ne near infrared region and the red is the uh, red wave band uh, reflectance for that particular image. Then differential uh, reflectance in these bands provide means of monitoring the density and vigor of green vegetation growth using the spectral uh, reflectivity of solar radiation. And the green leaves commonly have a larger reflectance in the near, near infrared than in the visible range and uh, leaves under water stress become more yellow and reflect significantly uh, less in the uh, near infrared range. So, using these concepts, using the, the, the remote sensing data, uh, we can identify the NDVI normalized difference vegetation index and that uh, shows the, the, the variation. So, the vegetation NDVI typically ranges from 0 0.1 up to 0 0.6. So, with the higher values associated with the greater density and the greenness of the plant uh, canopy. So, if this value is high, wherever you can see say for example, this is also taken from AWAS 2009. So, here wherever this black area that is more intense, uh, the, the intense vegetation is there. So, there the we will be having higher uh, NDVI and then wherever this white means it is lowest. So, with the higher values associated with the greater the density and greenness of the uh, plant canopy. Then regions of high variability in NDVI depict regions which are either 
uh, highly variable in precipitation regime and then uh, so generally this NDVI thing is generally we use for uh, to identify the agricultural droughts or the the agricultural land how the system is um, how the vegetation is varying and then what will be the the the, 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 how the with respect to NDVI we can identify uh, whether that particular uh, crop is uh, prone to uh, drought uh, uh, through this NDVI uh, index. Now, uh, so before closing this um, uh, the, the, the drought indices, let us have a brief um, comparison between three commonly used um, uh, ind indices like um, uh, the, the Palmer drought severity index or Palmer hydraulic drought index uh, and then uh, standardized precipitation index and then uh, crop moisture index. The CMI is generally for agriculture area. So, some of the, the, uh, the pros and cons are discussed here. So, the advantage is like it is non dimensional widely accepted especially in USA. Then the limitation include it is based upon arbitrary threshold then uh, may lag emerging droughts by several months less well suited for mountainous or of frequent climatic extremes. So, this has been derived by Palmer in 1965. Then the standardized precipitation index generally identifies the emerging droughts. Uh, months sooner than the the uh, Palmer drought in, drought index, and uh, uh, so this is the advantage that only the precipitation data is in, in needed. Uh, that here also the the limitation of cons uh, this is arbitrarily arbitrary threshold since only the the drought analysis based only on the precipitation, and it is given by McKean at 1995. And then crop, crop moisture index, the, the, this is for mainly for uh, agricultural droughts. So, this identifies the potential agricultural droughts uh, and uh, this is not a good uh, long term drought uh, monitoring tool since the, 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 the meteorological aspects are uh, not included. So, that way when we compare we can see that um, say as far as drought analysis uh, is concerned generally we use uh, the Palmer drought severity index or the standardized precipitation index these two are the most commonly used technique as far as the uh, drought analysis concerns. Now, say before closing this lecture say let us look into some of the drought assessment tools. So, different countries uh, say uh, how developed um, uh, drought uh, monitor monitoring tools or assessment tools. So, this drought monitoring uh, monitor say one of the tool is called the US drought monitor and it is a multi agency weekly drought assessment product uh, which depicts uh, drought conditions of uh, different time scales and of varying impacts using a blend of drought indices and local expert input. So, as we discussed earlier, so some of the drought indices, specific type of drought indices are used and then uh, in uh, United States this US drought monitor has been uh, developed and this is used as a drought assessment tool. Then drought termination and uh, amelioration, uh, so this is a web based tool used to quantify how much precipitation is uh, needed and the probability of receiving such precipitation to end or ameliorate. Uh, a, a Palmer hydraulic drought index uh, drought of specified intensity uh, say like minus 2 to minus 6 uh, on uh, 1 to 6 months time scale. So, this is say another drought assessment tool is called drought uh, termination and amelioration tool. Uh, so, uh, generally say many of these uh, agencies in United States like um, uh, say uh, joint agricultural weather facility of USDA and um, then NOVA, then climate prediction center, then national climate data center, uh, then uh, national drought mitigation center and various universities they have come together uh, to have this um, drought monitor by considering the various indices and then the, the various pattern, various changes. Uh, so, generally in, in, in United States they use uh, US drought monitor or drought termination and amelioration, amelior, amelioration uh, uh, model. So, in, uh, in most of these um, drought assessment tools uh, say the drought severity is uh, classified according to the drought magnitude. So, like the, the category like um, D0, D1, D2, D3, D4. So, D0 means abnormally dry. So, the percentage chance is 21 to 30 say for example, uh, say in a country like uh, United States. So, this they say 
depending upon the area specific percentile chance can be obtained percentile chance is for any given year out of 100 years then d1 is drought is moderate uh, percentage ch chance is 11 to 20 uh, drought say severe drought 6 to 10 percentage chance drought extreme 3 to 5 drought exceptional um, say percentage chance is 2 uh, so some of the primary indicators like um, uh, say uh, uh, pdi cpc soil moisture then model percentiles then usgs weekly stream flow uh, percent of normal precipitation spi like that the the various parameters or various indices are used to have such kind of um, uh, say severity classification then uh, before closing today's lecture just uh, let us have a brief look into the drought situation in india so as i mentioned in the the last lecture also india is very much prone to droughts uh, so the, the say uh, uh, large uh, uh, pro drought problems have been reported in the last century number of uh, years uh, so uh, say some of the criteria used by ministry of water resources to identify the drought prone areas of the country like when the annual rainfall is less than 75 percent of the normal in 20 percent of the years examines uh, then uh, less than 30 percent of the cultivated area is irrigated so these are generally two important criteria to to assess or to analyze that that particular year or particular area is drought prone or drought year uh, so then uh, uh, say say for example the first assessment of the the drought situation uh, has been assessed by irrigation commission in 1972 then again uh, uh, this has been revisited by national commission on agriculture in 1976 and further uh, drought area study and investigation uh, has been done by central water commission in 1978 a la large and extensive studies throughout the country showed that out of the uh, 329 million hectare of the the area of the country about one sixth uh, is uh, 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 drought prone say uh, say about um, uh, 50 million hectare is uh, drought prone as far as india is concerned so this is as reported in the ministry of water resources website so that way uh, we need a, a number of uh, drought mitigation measures drought is frequently occurring uh, in in many parts of the country and then uh, say uh, another drought assessment done by uh, say the 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 uh, national climate change research report uh, by, by uh, pg gore t prasad and uh, hr hathwar indian meteorology department pune published in 2010 uh, mapping of drought areas over over india so they analyzed the the uh, rainfall and uh, 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 various other parameters like evaporation for 100 years same uh, say for, for 1901 to uh, 1901 to 2000s for selected districts with the long rainfall data series uh, have been considered uh, by this um, uh, national climate uh, change uh, uh, research center uh, under Indian meteor departments and the drought criteria has been um, uh, say put as a meteorological drought over an area is defined uh, as a situation when rainfall over that area is less than 75 percent of the climatological normal very similar to the ministry of water resource um, criteria then further when deficit of rainfall is between 26 to 50 percent moderate drought is defined and when deficit of rainfall is more than 50 percent severe drought is defined so accordingly uh, the the uh, in the material department uh, uh, they have done a detailed study by considering the the rainfall pattern precipitation pattern for the uh, 20th century 1901 to uh, 2000 uh, and then uh, uh, say they have come up with, with uh, some results uh, say we, they identified which of the area will be most drought prone and then they have come up with the moderate drought prone um, uh, say areas and severe drought prone area so according to their analysis the 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 drought prone area in good northwest india like um, some of the subdivisions of Haryana, Delhi, East Rajasthan, West Rajasthan, Gujarat, uh, Saurashtra, Kutch, etc. Then West uh, and Central area like um, uh, East uh, Madhya Pradesh, West Madhya Pradesh, Kongan, Go Goa, Madhi, Ma Maharashtra, 
etcetera. Then peninsular India like coastal Andhra Pradesh, Rayal Sima, Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry, some part of Kerala like that. Then central north northeast India like Charkhand, Bihar, uh, East Uttar Pradesh, um, uh, West Uttar Pradesh like that. Then uh, northeast India, Assam and Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur etcetera. Then hilly region like Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand. So, these are some of the frequent uh, drought prone area uh, for the, the based upon the analysis for 100 years of the 20th century. Uh, so, uh, and then based upon this data, they have come up with a map. Uh, so, a mapping of drought areas over India uh, by uh, in this reports. So, they in say you can see the, see, see the, 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 the probabilities of moderate droughts. Say for example, it is moderate drought is indicated from 11 to 20 percent. Uh, so, given by this color, uh, so that is uh, distributed like this. So, that with respect to the moderate droughts, they have come up with uh, this map based upon the data analysis for 100 years. Then uh, say the, the with respect to severe drought conditions, they studied and then come up with say for example, the, the probability of severe drought in the range of 1 to 5 percent is uh, possible say for example, this uh, the most of the parts of the country say like even which is in this yellow color. So, like that they have come up with uh, maps. So, this shows an indicator and then based upon this historical data, we can analyze the drought situation. And as far as drought management in India is concerned, uh, larger thrust for watershed development under drought prone uh, area program is uh, given by government of India. Uh, so, so, some of the important um, um, aspects of this drought management in India like dry land farming and water resource development schemes, then drought tile crop production activities into the watershed project along with the soil conservation activities, then take up large scale dry and dry land farming demonstrations, then undertake research on efficacy and economics of sprinkler and drip irrigation systems, then construction of suitable water harvesting structures, conservation and optimal use of surface water and recharge of underground aquifers. Then afforestation and pasture developments, then animal husbandry and fodder developments, and then most um, most important aspect is the people participation in drought proofing. So that way, the drought management measures say put forward by government of India include the the, the various schemes like um, drought prone uh, area program by concerning the 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 water aspects, the water resource aspects like uh, rainwater harvesting, water conservation, then uh, soil conservation, uh, then um, the, the afforestation measures, then um, the, the, uh, the various schemes for people living like animal husbandry, fodder development, uh, all those things uh, the government has put in such a way that people participation should be given uh, the, the most uh, uh, say the most important aspect is the people participation. So, now some of the references used for today's lecture include especially uh, like uh, this um, uh, Lucas and uh, Vasildes 2004 published in Natural Hazards and Air System Sciences and then uh, AWAS Hydraulic Drought Analysis. So, these are two important references used for today's lecture. So, before closing few uh, questions, tutorial questions, critically study the various drought indices and compare each with uh, advantages and limitations and from the literature identify the most suitable drought index for Indian conditions. So, based upon today's lecture and uh, some uh, say uh, uh, details from the internet, we can you can get the details. Then uh, some self evaluation questions, why drought analysis required for drought mitigation? What is the role of drought index in drought mitigation? Uh, discuss standardized precipitation index with all details. Then describe the uh, drought assessment tools uh, with important features. And then few more questions, assignment questions, what is drought index? Explain Palmer drought severity index with all features. Illustrate normalized difference uh, vegetation index discuss drought severity uh, classifications. So, today what we discussed is the drought analysis, uh, the, the methodologies by using drought indices. Uh, so, the last lecture we were discussing about drought assessments, today we discussed about the drought analysis. Now, in the last lecture in this module on uh, drought management, we will discuss the drought uh, mitigation uh, measures. Thank you.